Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. I want to dive into mix translation in this video. In particular, why do we need to mix and work in a treated room when everybody out there isn't listening in treated rooms either, right? I mean, there are so many different playback systems, right? People listen on headphones, in their cars, in like studio apartments, in big living rooms, sometimes in, on big PA systems. So why doesn't it make sense to then also mix in a room that resembles the kind of playback environment where people listen to that music? Now, I totally get this question. I used to wonder this as well. I used to be confused about this as well. But there's, I think, a misunderstanding about what mixed translation really means. So let's dive in. So the fundamental thing here to understand is that the mix needs to be kind of a common denominator, a kind of baseline of audio information, if you will, that contains everything that all these different playback systems need. Because if something isn't in the mix already, it can't be recreated by that other playback system. Should be obvious, right? But why is this important? Because in essence, all these other playback systems take away information from the mix when they play it out to the listener, right? Even when we're talking about reflections, say, in a room, although they might maybe broaden the stereo image when we're talking about reflections coming from the left and right, they also induce comb filters, which remove tonal information from the mix, sometimes to the extent that certain parts of that tonality or the certain components of the mix are basically gone. So let's think about a, a simple example, maybe a stereo system in a living room, okay? So this system is probably not going to be set up right. We're not going to have the speakers set up in an equilateral triangle. Instead, maybe the speakers are on the floor and one of them is kind of next to that door and the other speaker is kind of perched on a shelf next to the window. So what does that give us? Well, first of all, we're not going to be creating a proper stereo image. There is no phantom center. The listener is probably also going to be sitting closer to one speaker than the other. And in essence, they're going to be listening to only that one speaker. So if the channel feeding that speaker doesn't contain all the necessary information to convey the music to the listener, that person won't be able to enjoy the music fully, sometimes to the extent that the music is basically broken. And this is going to be the same in a car, for example, or also on big PA systems. Usually you are so much closer to one speaker that you're just basically hearing that one speaker. Now imagine that you are creating your mix on a playback system that is skewed in one particular direction, yeah? similarly to a very poorly set up stereo system, for example. So it won't be clearly and honestly representing to you what is in the actual mix. And that means that you cannot create that common denominator, that baseline mix that contains all the information that all the other systems need to also convey the music properly. And if you've ever wondered why one of your mixes sounds so different on a different speaker system, this is exactly why, okay? So imagine you're playing the same mix on a speaker system that is in itself also skewed, but by pure chance, it removes the part of the information that isn't in your mix anyway, right? So again, by pure chance, your mix might sound fine on this system. But then on another system that takes away, that removes a different part of the mix of the music, we're now facing a, a scenario where that part is gone. But on top of that, the part that isn't in the music anyway, because you didn't put it in there, is also gone. And at that point, the music again might be so broken that it basically becomes unlistenable. So then the obvious question is, what is that common denominator, right? What is that baseline mix? Well, simply put, 
It is a one-channel mix, aka a mono mix, that contains all the different instruments in a balance that gives them their place and the space to convey the emotional journey of the music, right? And it's at this stage that we transition from science to art. Yeah, This is where mixing becomes an art form and it's no longer just a science of getting balances right. And on top of that, I guess stereo has kind of established itself as the next step up from that baseline mono one channel mix. Although, as I just mentioned, a lot of stereo systems are heavily compromised. And that's why we still talk about mono compatibility so much when we're mixing. We want to create a, a mix that sounds good in stereo because a lot of people listen to stereo mixes but it needs to be able to work in mono in order to maximize the compatibility with all the other systems out there. So to then come back to the original question, why mix in a treated room? Well, because it gives us the playback system, the environment in which it is easiest to create that common denominator, that baseline one channel mono mix, but with the capability of working on a stereo system that then hopefully also translates properly to all the other playback systems out there. Yeah, it's as simple as that. And of course, if you wanna create that treated room yourself, I've got a home studio treatment framework for you to follow that you can download for free at the link in the description. This is my five steps to treating a room and getting it to translate. So what steps you should take in your room and in which order, what to focus on at each step of the process of treating a room in order to not be turning in circles and to maximize the results that you get from your speakers and your room. This is again, my home studio treatment framework, which you can download for free at the link in the description. And with that, thanks for watching. Let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.